Hello, my name is Taylor Ross. I'm the owner of Frustum Virtual in Los Angeles, California. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use the anti-latency FreeD server to get your camera tracking data directly into Unreal Engine. First thing we need to do is launch Unreal Engine. For this tutorial, I'll be using a basic template from Unreal Engine. I will be running the 5.3.2 version of Unreal Engine. This process should be the same in any custom Unreal Engine project that you have set up to run in-camera VFX on an LED volume. Since I will be showing you this sample using an Unreal Engine preset, I will select Film, Video, and Live Events. I will then select In-Camera VFX as my preset. I'll give this project a name, Anti-Latency Tutorial 1. And then in the bottom right hand corner, I will select create. Once Unreal Engine launches, you'll see that my layout may be a little bit different than yours. I have a place actors tab in the upper left hand corner. In order to get your layout to look like mine, just navigate to the windows tab in the upper left hand corner, select load layout, and then select UE4 classic layout. You will also need to make sure that your live link panel is open. In order to open this, go to Window, Virtual Production, Live Link. Just make sure that you have this live link panel open. With that set up, we need to enable some plugins. So we'll go to Edit, Plugins. In the search bar, just search for FreeD. Look for the Live Link FreeD plugin and make sure that it's turned on. Once the Live Link FreeD plugin is enabled, you will need to restart Unreal Engine. Now we can go ahead and close our plugins window. We only need the FreeD server plugin. I will also quickly dock my content browser. Now we will need to navigate to the Live Link panel. In the Live Link panel, select the source button in the upper left hand corner. You should now see the Live Link FreeD source as an available option. There are two available settings in the Live Link FreeD source IP address and UDP port number. I set up our anti-latency FreeD server settings in another tutorial. Be sure to watch that video to get more details on how to set up the FreeD server for anti-latency. I will quickly open the anti-latency server JSON file settings. Again, we covered all of these settings in another tutorial, so be sure to watch that video if you need help setting it up. Inside this JSON file, you can see my IP address and port number. This is the IP address and port number that we will need to use in Unreal Engine in order to get the anti-latency FreeD server up and running. I'm going to select my IP address here and hit Control C on my keyboard to copy it. Also take note of the port number. By default, this port number will match the default port number in Unreal Engine. But if you've made any changes to this port number, you will need to take note of that because you're about to input it in Unreal Engine. So now with Unreal Engine open, I will select Source, Live Link 3D Source. Now I will paste my IP address into the IP address here. The UDP port number already matches, so I won't make any changes. And then I will just select Add. With this Live Link 3D source added, you will see that the status says Receiving. In order to get the subject section to populate with our devices, we need to run the server. I will navigate back to my Anti-Latency 3D server folder and open it. Once I have my Anti-Latency 3D server folder open, I will navigate to the anti-latency 3D server with the type application and I will launch it. Now my anti-latency 3D server is running so I can close this folder. Now you can see that in Unreal Engine, my subject has been added. The subject name is camera zero and the role is camera. This camera name setting is something that we covered in the anti-latency 3D server tutorial. So be sure to watch that tutorial if you need help setting this up. Now I'm going to go ahead and minimize my anti-latency 3D server. We need this to be running in the background, so make sure you don't close it. Just minimize it. Now we're going to save this preset so that when we're running Switchboard and Switchboard Listener, it will know what Live Link preset to reference. To save this preset, just select Presets from the Live Link panel, and then select Save as Preset. Give the preset a unique name. I will name mine Live Link Anti-Latency. Select Save in the lower right-hand corner. Now that our Live Link preset has been saved, we can see that the status of our FreeD server is receiving and that camera zero is working properly. This is represented by this little green dot next to camera zero. If this dot is yellow, then something isn't working properly. To get this camera tracking data to affect our ICVFX camera, we will select the ICVFX camera. I'll navigate to my outliner. You can see that I have the in display in cam VFX config and this cinema camera actor selected. With this Cinema Camera Actor selected, navigate to the Details panel and find Live Link Component Controller. 
go ahead and select the Live Link Component Controller, and then under Subject Representation, we're going to select our Camera Zero. Once you select Camera Zero, it should immediately update the position of the ICVFX camera. Based on the default placement I have set in Anti-Latency Service, my camera's pan and tilt will already be correct. I will quickly open Anti-Latency Service, navigate to the Placements tab. The default placement that I have selected is called Identity Forward Inverted. It's represented by this blue check mark in the upper right hand corner. Now I'll show you what my default placement looks like. I'll select these three dots and then select Edit. You can now see the placement of my alt represented by this green outline. The alt is looking forward and it is placed upside down. With the alt placed upside down and facing forward, I do not need to change in the axis in Unreal Engine. You will need to run some tests based on the placement that you have set as your default placement in Anti-Latency Service. For instance, if your alt placement is facing directly down or in any other orientation other than facing forward and upside down, you will need to adjust the transform in Unreal Engine. I will close Anti-Latency Service to quickly show you how to do this. In our Live Link panel, I will select the camera zero. On the right hand side, you will see pre-process. This setting will allow us to change the transform of our camera tracking data. Navigate back to the Live Link panel. Under pre-process, you're gonna select this plus sign next to array element. Now in the index setting, you're gonna use this dropdown to select transform axis switch. If I drop down this index and drop down Live Link, you will see that we have a front, right, and up axis. This will correspond to the front, right, and up axis of our physical camera in our studio. So based on the placement of your tracker on your camera, you may need to change these settings in order to get the pan and tilt of your physical camera to match the pan and tilt of the camera in the virtual world. I already know that my camera's pan and tilt match in the virtual and physical world. I will pan and tilt my camera now to show you that. But just know that based on the alt's placement on your physical camera, you may need to do some troubleshooting and setting adjustment in order to get the pan and tilt to match between the physical and virtual cameras. The last thing I'm gonna do here is move my end display configuration so that I can actually see the frustum updating on this LED screen. In another tutorial, I'll go through the entire process of setting up the end display configuration. This tutorial is specifically covering the entire process of getting your anti-latency 3D server to run in Unreal Engine. I will quickly navigate to my outliner, select the end display in cam VFX config, and then I will select this edit in display in cam VFX config to edit this configuration. All I want to do here is select all of my static mesh screens and move them forward. I'm just gonna move these forward to about six meters. Since I'm not actually going to use this in display configuration, I won't really worry about any of the other settings here. I'll just navigate to the upper left hand corner and select compile and save. I will close the in display configuration. Now in this viewport, you can see my camera's frustum on this wall. I'll just move these 3D objects so that we can see it a little bit better. I will also select this cinema camera actor that's attached to the in-display in-cam VFX config. I will now pan and tilt my camera and you should be able to see the frustum updating on the in-display in-cam VFX configuration. Just to be clear, I will cover the entire in-display in-cam VFX configuration in a different tutorial. In that tutorial, I will be going over all of the settings and everything that you need to set up to get your in-display working with switchboard and switchboard listener. This tutorial is just covering the basics of how to get your anti-latency device to send 3D server information directly into Unreal Engine so you can use that camera tracking data for virtual production. Hopefully this video was helpful in getting you started with your anti-latency 3D server and Unreal Engine, getting your camera tracking information directly into Unreal Engine. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos and thanks for watching.